All right, uh, today we want to talk about soft maximum approaches to multi-objective decision-making uh, for encoding human intuitive values. So we've been experimenting with nonlinear transformation functions for multi-objective decision-making in the breakable bottles environment and, and several others. Um, we've been motivated by thinking about human values and how we can model them in a multi-objective way. So why seek to learn to encode human values explicitly? AI system creators disagree about what counts as moral and um, need to make choices about how their systems are designed. Um, and we see that play out already in lots of existing systems. And perhaps it's good then to, to build in uh, value learning explicitly. Um, Kesa Tala wrote about how a utility function based on human preferences doesn't always satisfy uh, human values, uh, which differ because uh, there, well, humans have inconsistent utility functions. Utility functions don't always do a good job of resolving higher and lower order preferences. Don't distinguish key neurological features um, of human preferences, such as wanting and, and liking, um, and may not adequately generalize from existing preferences to, to new ones. Values is a, a little bit more generalizable. So people also um, disagree about which values are important. And this is uh, one reason why we want to model human values as a multi-objective problem. The graph on the right um, is some data collected um, in the UK um, from people, uh, supporters of the Labour Party and Conservative Party in the UK uh, looking at uh, their relative importance they give to uh, different uh, moral values. These five foundations you see here, care, fairness, loyalty, authority, and purity, um, come from the moral psychologist John Haidt's work on human values. Um, and what we see is that across these five basic um, psychological uh, foundations of human morality, we see that um, people who support each different each party have quite different weightings on how important they think various features of morality are. And not only do people disagree over which values are important and whose values should be uh, take precedence, but um, individuals themselves feel conflicted with themselves over which of their values take precedence. And so you have the classic trolley problem on on the screen here, and uh, in this. Uh, the um, hapless man with the lever has to decide, does he switch that lever to divert the trolley from rolling over five people to uh, merely rolling over one? Um, and a lot of people feel quite conflicted over this. Do I save five people by killing one person? Um, and individuals can even change their preferences over time. So um, th this is uh, likely reflects the competition between uh, multiple objectives that people are trying to fill or multiple values people have and they're trying to find the balance between them and uh, can 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 have inconsistent processes about how to how to make that judgment. So if we want to model, model human values, uh, perhaps we want to look at um, things in a multi objective fashion as well. But using a uh, maximum expected utility framework is problematic. Um, this has been argued um, in Peter Van Plu's 2018 paper, many good actions are excluded um, using multiple expected utility. Um, many good solution, compromise solutions between um, different values. Um, so we wanted to look at nonlinear ag aggregation functions for balancing out different objectives. Low impact AI is an attempt to balance some primary objective while minimizing impact on an agent's environment. It typically balances a performance objective with an alignment objective or safety objective. And we thought this was a useful and uh, interesting context to look at uh, this problem of um, balancing multi-objectives. So as far as we're aware, this work is the first within multi-objective AI research to look at continuous nonlinear multi-objective aggregation functions for low impact AI. Um, we're building on some similar work by uh, Peter Van Plu, uh, looking at uh, thresholded values rather than nonlinear um, continuous ones. 
And it seems to be the first to apply a split, split function exponential logarithmic transform to any AI decision making or RL application. Um, some related past efforts, Vamplu has produced a paper looking at impact minimization through a thresholded lexemin. Uh, Alex Turner has looked at scaling between multi objectives. Um, they start out with fairly similar values to ours, uh, describing a conservative agency to balance optimizing primary reward function with preservation of the ability to optimize auxiliary reward functions. Uh, but they looked at uh, learning approaches for scaling between different objectives, which seem pretty complementary to what we're doing today. Uh, and Matthias Rolf has done some really interesting work um, and actually has tested one of the functions that we're talking about today, uh, an exponential, negative exponential function uh, that are a continuous nonlinear function. Uh, he's looked at it in the context of environments where agents have to move between different locations to forage different resources. Uh, and so we're looking at perhaps that function as well as some other continuous nonlinear functions um, in the context of low impact AI. Before we designed the uh, transformational functions, we analyzed various AI safety failure scenarios and uh, wrote down a list of desiderata, uh, which would enable to mitigate various failure scenarios. And a couple of these uh, points from desiderata are mentioned here. First is conservatism, which has two interpretations. First in interpretation is that uh, safety objectives have exponentially higher importance than performance objectives. And second interpretation is that any objective, including the performance objectives, have exponentially higher importance in case they are in the negative range of their value. And second, desiderata is balancing, which uh, has two aspects or two uses. First is achieving soft conjunction between all object objectives, which means that all the objectives are paid attention to about same amount. And second is that no objective could dominate absolutely, given that uh, possible rewards could be infinite. We should exclude scenarios where then one, the easiest uh, reward gets all the attention. Thank you. Roland. Uh, so we're a computation in terms of um, implementing our testing. We've built on Peter Van uh, framework um, that uh, actually uh, more out of the 2021 paper, I think. Um, so we're really grateful for his uh, support and help in this project um, as we've uh, built a lot of our experimentation on, on um, his work. So, uh, just to talk a little bit about that framework, uh, Robert, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, sure. So basically um, what has been done in the reference here for, from Peter Wamplu is that Q-learning, uh, a common reinforcement learning algorithm um, has been used um, which was provided with two reward sources uh, instead of um, one, which is the typical setup. And one being a low impact measure, uh, which is called RA, and the other being the performance measure, which um, basically specifies the, the agent's goal. And so um, the utilities that we talked about earlier are directly associated with these Q values. Um, and um, those are the ones that are provided to the agent, um, which then bases its decision making on them. Um, but on the other hand, the agents are also evaluated on a third uh, measure, which is called R star. And this encodes kind of the desired performance um, uh, of the agents, which includes uh, penalties for, for example, high impact actions or um, those actions that are considered high impact. Right, so the agent's able to learn off our low impact measure RA and performance measure RP, but then we're evaluating the perform ultimate performance um, on R star. Right, 
Um, so the environments that we considered um, were four, four, four different ones. Um, the first one um, is the, well, there are actually two, two environments. The bottles environments have uh, two different flavors, one called unbreakable and the other one breakable bottles. And the agent here um, navigates back and forth in a one dimensional grid world where on the one end there's a, a source um, tile which provides uh, the agent with bottles. And on the other end, you have a, a delivery point um, where the agent can deliver bottles to. And so the, the, the goal is to deliver two bottles to this destination. But on the other hand, the agent can also randomly drop uh, bottles on the way between these two points. And the difference between unbreakable and breakable bottles is just that, um, well, bottles can break in the breakable bottles environment. So when they are dropped, they will lie on the ground. And um, in the other one, the agent can actually pick them up again. And this has implications because in the, um, in the performance evaluation, drop bottles will actually cause a, a penalty. Uh, well, then there's the Sokoban environment, which is shown on the lower left. There, the agent has the goal of um, getting to the green tile in the bottom uh, right of the grid. And it can push away the box marked with the X. However, there are two different ways. Um, in one case, when the agent pushes the box down, it would be irreversibly placed in a corner. Whereas if it pushes the box to the right, um, this will not be the case. And um, this is also kind of encoded in the evaluation metric, um, whether the agent chooses the irreversible action or the reversible one. And then uh, finally, we have the doors environment where the agent can either go around um, the full um, square here to reach the goal. Um, and on the other hand, it could also go through two doors, which each take um, a number of actions to uh, open them and close them again. Um, but in the end, it's uh, an overall shorter path, but requires irreversible actions. Right, thank you. Um, so uh, let's take a look at uh, what we did with that. So the prior state of the art in um, Peter Van Vliet's 2021 paper was uh, close was the alignment threshold maximum. Uh, this was one of the top performers in that paper. And in this, um, the agent maximizes performance subject to first achieving a thresholded level of alignment. So you're not aiming for the maximum possible alignment, but a good enough alignment. And then um, subject to that, aiming to maximize performance. And this performed uh, around about um, the best on that R star metric. So um, we were thinking about this compromise between a maximum expected utility and a min function. Um, maximum expected utility will proceed even when an action has a large negative consequence, as long as the positive consequences are slightly larger. Uh, we didn't want that. Uh, we want uh, a agent that will only proceed when th there are no large negative consequences or, or they're much dwarfed by positive consequences. So we propose modifying that by inserting a transform function for each objective, uh, like uh, the transform function that you see here. Uh, so this is not too dissimilar from a uh, maximum expected utility, except that we have a nonlinear transform function applied to every objective. So and what, what does that function look like? So these are continuous functions, not thresholded um, as in um, Peter Van Vliet's 2021 work. Um, and so the most basic form is the exponential loss aversion. This was described in Matthias Rolf's work uh, quite well. Um, so there is a negative exponential of, of negative value, which means uh, as you get more strongly negative, uh, you uh, are penalized much, much more strongly. Uh, we looked at a, at a split function exponential log loss aversion, which behaves the same way to the first model in the negative space, but in positive space, there's a log function. And the effect of that is to uh, give us a more gentle uh, trade-off uh, at 
the positive space, um, which is where typically where performance objectives are, where you're chasing reward. We also looked at a linear exp exponential loss aversion, um, same principle, achieving some sort of compromise between an exponential and a um, more softer uh, tapering off in the positive space. And in this case, just a, a adding a linear term. Uh, and finally, we looked at a squared error based alignment method. And in this method, it's a bit different in that uh, we uh, do tell the agent explicitly we set some value, some objectives, in this case, one objective to be a performance objective and one objective to be an alignment objective, um, potentially more than one. Um, and then these are treated uh, distinctly. Performance objectives are modeled model linearly, alignment objectives. Um, have a squared error function and only are applied uh, where x is uh, negative or equal to zero. So what do these look like? Well, the transformation functions transform each objective before we sum them together, as you saw earlier. Um, each function embeds our, our two principles we discussed before, this conservatism and balancing. So. Um, if a particular objective has a strongly negative value, then we're going to take increasingly negative values much, much more seriously. Um, and then um, comparing different values, uh, we're going to balance out values so that um, we're, we're biased more towards emphasizing um, value over, over a set of values rather than a particular one. And this, this falls out of the nonlinear design. So what do these functions look like? Well, the transformation functions transform each objective before summation, as we described earlier. And each function embeds our uh, conservatism and, and balancing principle. So that conservatism principle, um, a loss on a particular objective uh, counts a lot more. The, the more negative we already are, the, the more into negative territory we are that the more additional loss will count against us so this is in order to weight more strongly when we're in strong negative value and secondly we want to balance out those objectives so that on the whole no one objective can dominate the decision making uh, and smaller outcomes will, will get um, exponentially larger weight So just thinking a little bit about the shape of those functions on the left, we can see the graph of the function of x by x. And on the right, we can see the graph of the change in the function of x by x uh, plotted in log scale, um, although the values on the scale describe uh, the, the actual values of the change of x, change of the function of x. So a couple of points on that, you can see that uh, on the graph of x, uh, the function of x by x, where they x is zero, then the function of x is also zero. They tend to pass through that. And you can also see that in the negative space, as you get further and further negative, uh, generally those functions uh, emphasize those negative values more and more so that a particular objective becomes more and more important as it gets more and more negative. And then conversely, in that positive space, you can see that there is a tapering off so that each particular objective is, is not quite so important as you're getting more and more strongly positive. So it's it's uh, this is embedding that prin uh, principled conservatism. And for the split function exponential log loss aversion in particular, uh, we can see the uh, function at the change of x by x at zero is one. And that we think that might have some helpful properties. So we wondered how our new functions would perform in a variety of contexts, scaling primary reward given by powers of 10 from negative two to, to two and scaling the alignment penalty along the same scales across the four environments that Robert described a little earlier. So how did those, what did that look like? So we examined performance across these scales. 
Um, the split function exponential log loss aversion performs better than the TLO A, the threshold of alignment in the breakable bottles. Uh, you can see the split function in blue, the TLO A, the threshold of alignment in purple. Um, and you can see consistently, um, no matter how we scaled our performance um, objective, we had a superior performance for that TLO, for, sorry, for SFLLA. Um, in the other environments, um, they were tied pretty closely um, as we perturbed reward. Now, as we perturbed the uh, penalty, the in this case, the alignment objectives that, that tended to be negative, we saw uh, less equivocal results. And th there was really no function that clearly performed well across all of those. Um, so thinking a little bit about the result, the positive result we got there, where the SFELLA does seem, tend to perform a little bit better in that breakable bottles environment. And we wondered why that was. The breakable bottles environment has a heavier alignment penalty than the unbreakable bottles environment, because if you drop that bottle, you can't pick it up again. Um, and so you're penalized right throughout the um, remainder of the episode for that bottle being broken. And so that is confirmed on the right. You can see this is a uh, graph of the average penalty um, in, within those two environments uh, for each agent uh, for the alignment objective. And you can see that the, the, the top two lines with the more gentler penalty, those are the uh, unbreakable bottles environment. Um, the breakable bottles environment is on the bottom and it's got a much heavier penalty there. So our function is magnifying negative values exponentially, which could cause it to respond even more cautiously and take those negative penalties even more seriously. Um, and that may be why it's performed better. Um, but we do have to remember that it also performed superior on the performance metric. Um, so it's, it's a little unclear why that is, but it may have been that um, learnt responding quickly to the alignment penalty up first also happened to help um, doing do, do better on that performance metric. So what do we, where do we want to go next? Um, our function works best within a specific range and in particular um, we designed it to work within this approximate range of, of, of a z-score, typical z-score from negative three to three. Um, and as you can see, a lot of those functions get exponentially worse um, as you continue to go negative. So, so past values um, of, of three or negative three or less, there's some unforeseeable side effects where any change at all is, is going to be um, pretty overwhelming to the algorithm. Um, and Alexander Turner's work on scaling in a multi-objective setting might be quite useful for us in working that out. We're also looking at a wider range of environments. So we've perturbed reward functions. What if we perturb the probability of bottle dropping in the breakable bottles environment? And Matthias Rolf's 2020 foraging environment could be a really useful and interesting thing to look at as well. So in summary, we experimented with a continuous nonlinear irrigation function for multi-objective low impact AI. And we found, found that our split function exponential log loss aversion performed better than a threshold alignment function on that breakable bottles task. And it might've been because the breakable bottles has stronger ne negative penalties compared to unbreakable bottles. And that uh, split function magnifies the importance of those, those strong negative penalties. Um, our further work will look at performance in a broader range of environments and how it can sort of get the scaling working better um, for the particular functions that, that we've got. Uh, thanks much, very much for your time and um, looking forward to discussing this with you and uh, taking questions that you might have.